Okay, sir, we are all here. Whenever you're ready, we can begin. Okay, we'll call uh, the um, Costa Mesa Sanitary District meeting, board meeting uh, to order. And um, if you would, please stand, uh, all that can stand and follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Uh, my Vice President Schaefer, would you lead us in the invocation? Uh, I will, Mr. President. Um, once again, we ask for guidance as we make decisions that affect our residents. Please ensure that we make those decisions <laughs> in the best interest of all involved. Please also watch over and guide the families who have suffered so horrifically in the horrible tragedy in Florida. Amen. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Director Brett Eccles. Here. Director Arthur Perry. Here. Secretary Arlene Schaefer. Here. Vice President Michael Schaefer. Here. And President Robert Uten. Here. Thank you. Um, not, now is the time for public comments. Uh, time has been set aside uh, and there, there will be a limit of four minutes. Um, well, well, I skipped over, are there, there are no ceremonial matters and presentations, right? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Then we'll go on with public comments. Uh, do, you, do you see any hands raised or? Yes, I have Mr. Mosher's hand that is raised at this time. Uh, Mr. Moser, would you go ahead, please? Yeah, uh, thank you, President Uten. I, I just noticed in one of the draft minutes from May that there was a plan at that time to reopen partially the headquarters building. And I'm just curious if that has happened yet, because from the website banner ads on the home page, uh, one would guess that the headquarters building is still closed. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, if you're going to stay on, I'll have Scott address that later. I, I can address it now, Mr. President, if you want me to. Okay, go ahead, Scott. Yeah, real quick, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, Board of Directors. Uh, we plan on uh, bringing all the staff back to HQ on July 6th, and that will we will be also open to the public to uh, do business at HQ uh, beginning on July 6th. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we'll go down to the consent calendar. Um, do any of the directors want to pull any of these items? If not, do I'll I have a approve. motion? I'll move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or any, abs ab any, any ab abstentions? Um, we'll go on down now to... Um, Uh, public hearings, and uh, this is a, a public hearing to adopt ordinance number 132 and resolution num number 2021-939, uh, confirming wastewater annual charges and resolution uh, number 2021-940, confirming uh, solid waste annual charges, respectively for um, fiscal year 21-22 to be collected on the taxes, on the general taxes and direct clerk to file with the county auditor. And I have a, a script that I have to follow in order to do this properly. Uh, we, we, we will now, and I probably should have done this in lieu of reading that, but we'll now conduct a public hearing to adopt resolutions and ordinances confirming wastewater and solid waste charges to be collected by uh, the Orange County auditor. Uh, this hearing is to implement our annual assessment on the tax rolls of our charges for solid waste and wastewater. These rates have been established in compliance with Prop 218. This is an annual assessment that is done based on uh, engineer's report that is to be filed with the county auditor. Uh, this hearing is an opportunity to protest in case property owner may believe that his or her property has been improperly 
classified or assessed. I will now open the public hearing. Are there any hands raised, Madam Clerk? Yes, Mr. Mosier has his hand raised. Mr. Mosier. Yes, uh, thank you again, President Uten. I, I am not protesting, but I did have uh, several comments about this. Go ahead. Uh, for, first of all, from what you just read, the ordinance and resolution are confirming the rates. And I noticed that although the resolution for the solid waste rate states in the resolution what the rate is that's being confirmed, uh, the resolution for the wastewater rate, which is not changing, says that it's not changing, but it doesn't actually say what rate is being confirmed. That is in the staff report. So I'm wondering if the resolution should also actually say what the rate will be for the next year. And regarding the rates that are stated in the resolution, not in the resolution, in the staff report, uh, the, the district has a wastewater rate for residential dwelling units. I'm, there's a rate for single family lots. I'm wondering if there's any additional charge for accessory dwelling units, because it says that the rate is per dwelling unit. And for non-residential accounts, it says that the rate is per thousand square feet. I wonder if that needs any clarification as to what square feet that is referring to, whether it's net square feet of the building, the lot, gross square feet or what. And then finally for a district that proper, correctly, I think, prides itself on transparency, somebody who receives their property tax bill and tries to confirm that they're being charged the correct rates, I think finds it unnecessarily difficult to confirm from the district website what the current rates are. I am a wastewater rate customer and there is a tab on the, on the district website for wastewater. If I click on that, uh, the rate structure doesn't pop out at me. There, there is a link to a rate study, but not to what the current rates are. There is a excellent list of sewer system frequently asked questions. I do not find in that what the rates are. Uh, there's a transparency page uh, or tab on the district website. I don't find there what the rates are. And so very obscurely to find them, I have to look under departments, finance, scroll down to the bottom of the page and find a PDF with the annual rates, which actually already have posted the rate that you're about to approve. And also he put rates in the search box. You don't come up with anything immediately useful. So I'm thinking the district could do better in that respect, perhaps putting links to what the current rates are for solid waste and uh, wastewater on in multiple places pointing to where, where the public can find what the rates are. So those are my comments. Thank you. Um, Scott, would you like to address any, any of uh, Mr. Moser's comments? Well, regarding the last, sure, Mr. President. Uh, yes, we will. We will take a look at uh, the website again. And, and uh, uh, when he said that that uh, the rates, he couldn't find the rates, and I was quite surprised because I, I guess maybe because I know where they're at. That's probably why I was thinking that. But so, but we could definitely make it. Uh, uh, put the the rates uh, in different areas of the website. That that's not a problem. We we can work on that. And um, as far as the the square footage, you know, I I, I don't. I'm assuming it's it's. I, I believe it's the building. But I, I let me let me double check on that, um, and then I and again as far as um, accessing 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 dwelling units, again I, I don't have the answer to that, and I have to um, come back and uh, give an answer on that. But I don't I don't believe it includes accessing dwelling units. I, it's something that we need we're, we need to work on. Um, I think Mark Esker could probably correct if I'm wrong, but uh, we will we will report back uh, with you with the accurate information on those on those last two questions. Yeah, Scott, um, this is Mark. Um, per state, I guess, uh, legislation, we're not to charge for ADUs per se, but we are allowed to charge, if there's an inspection fee, we can charge an inspection fee. And then if there's a plan check fee uh, or plan check, we can, we can uh, 
charge for a plan check, but the fixtures and the ADU itself is not subject to uh, paying fees or connection fees. Uh, and the wastewater treatment fee collected by OCSD is also waived. So ADUs have a special legislation that exempts them from some of the fees that we normally cl collect for a development. Thank you, Mark. And, and Scott, I'm sure that it's the uh, square footage of the, uh, the building. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure too, but to confirm yeah. it, I, I can report back to Mr. Mosier and, and to the board. Yes it, yes, it is. Sorry I didn't mention that one, Scott, as well. Uh, but I, I will confirm that when we issue an invoice to an owner slash developer slash contractor is for the square feet of building development, not the square feet of the lot. Right. And then, for example, uh, OCS deal charge per bedroom, we charge per fixture. Uh, but there's also an OCSD charge per square foot of dwelling unit, not lot size. Okay, thank you. I think that answers most of the questions. Um, um, do, do we have any other hands raised, uh, Madam Clerk? Uh, not that I see, sir. Have you, have you received any uh, written um, protests? No, Mr. President. So I'll now open the public hearing and hearing no objections or protests, I will now close, oh, I, I, I start over. Hearing no protests or objections, I will now close the public hearing and entertain a motion to adopt, adopt the resolutions and ordinance, which will assess the properties in the district and which will be filed in the district uh, clerk with the county auditor. Move for approval as presented. I'll second it. This is for the uh, wastewater charges. Oh, for the waste for the wastewater charges. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. We have a we have a, a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed or any abstentions? Okay. Now we need to do the, the a resolution adopting the solid waste charges. Do I hear a motion? I'll, I'll move the adoption of the solid waste charges. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? And lastly is uh, we need a motion to um, approve the ordinance confirming the charges. Move for oh. that. That's ordinance 32. Yes. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or any abstentions? Uh, then we can go on to the next item. Thank you very much. Um, okay, now, now we go to general manager's reports. And uh, the first item in the general manager reports is adopt resolution number 2021-2021. 941, adopting the uh, biannual budget for fiscal years 21, 22, and 22, 23. Um, do any of the board members have any discussion on this item? Mr. President? Director Eccles. I have a question uh, of Caitlin when it's appropriate. Go ahead. Um, Caitlin, uh, a small difference, and, and I didn't go line by line, so I was hoping maybe you could fill in the blank, but from our last uh, study session where we reviewed the proposed budget, in the uh, uh, solid waste, it looks like it's increased by about 15.9, and in the wastewater, 14.3. Can you remind mm -hmm. me what uh, caused those increases from, what is it, June 8th to now? Yes, thank you. Good. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the board. Um, yes, we made a, two minor changes. Um, one, it's in the professional services account. Um, that's um, because we are signing a new IT contract, which Gina will be present um, later this evening. Um, it's about $15,000 more um, than the current contract. 
um, and then a very minor $1,000 different in the liability insurance account that was adjusted. Okay. And then in that, I'm sorry, that's in the fiscal year 2021-22 and then fiscal year 2022-23, um, the solid waste fund, now it's balanced because I um, put 24900 in the contingency account. Got it. Uh, perfect. That's what I was looking for. You saved me hours of going line by line to uh, compare. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> hey, Bob, I have a question for Caitlin. Yes. Okay. In the trash hauler budget for 2021 20, 22, is there a CIP increase listed? No, it is not uh, included in the budget. But in six months, we're going to be looking at that for an increase. At that time, we will do a budget adjustment. We'll go to the board for a budget adjustment if okay. we have to. Okay. Now, I think we're going to have to, but I, I didn't see it in here. So that's why I'm asking. Okay. Thank you. A any other directors have questions for Caitlin or staff? If, if not, do I have a motion to approve? I'll move for approval. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any uh, abstentions? Okay, we can go on to item number two, which is uh, consider a, approving a budget adjustment for $96,500 to purchase two new bypass pumps. A apparently, uh, these the, the existing two pumps, uh, the Air Quality Management District has uh, alerted us that um, they're, they're pro probably uh, well, the Air, AQMD has a, an emissions concern with <laughs> with them. Um, does anyone do, do any of the directors have a, is, any discussion? Want want to discuss the item further? I think we have to improve it. I'll move for approval of the adjustment. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Or any opposed and or any abstentions. Okay, then we'll go on to item number three, which is considering uh, consider awarding a contract for IT management services to Acorn Technology Services. Scott, do you want to, who, who should be commenting on this or? Uh, Gino, Gina Torano will be giving a, a presentation on this report. Yes. Thank you, Scott, and good evening, members of the board. The district has been in contract with Land One Enterprise for IT management services to, since 2015. And in an effort to adhere to best practices, we released a request for proposal and conducted a competitive bidding process starting in early May of this year. We received a total of 10 proposals from various IT companies throughout Southern California and conducted a best value criteria evaluation of these proposals. The evaluation took into account the cost of services, the proposal's responsiveness to the RFP, the company's experience with providing similar services to similar agencies, their overall ability to provide services and any distinguishing characteristics. After this evaluation, Acorn Technology Services unanimously received the highest scores from all raters. They submitted a very impressive proposal that clearly and directly responded to all aspects of the RFP, and they demonstrated a history of trusted experience working with local government agencies. Key areas of focus, such as cybersecurity and recovery planning and overall responsiveness were stressed in their proposal, and these are all very important aspects. Um, of the district's IT services. We also conducted a reference check with their other customers, including the cities of Monrovia, La Quinta, South Pasadena, and Huntington Beach. And we received extremely positive reviews and feedback regarding uh, their capabilities and their understanding of government needs. So overall, staff feels that ACORN is a strong fit for this very essential role at the district. Um, as you can see in the staff report, I have outlined the costs of ACORN services. 
So there is an initial assessment fee of $6,775, and then a monthly fee of $3,935 for a three-year period. Therefore, the total cost of the three-year contract is $148,435. And then during the transition period of up to two months, it is essential to retain our current IT contractor, Land One Enterprise, uh, just to ensure that there's no lost time or information during the transition. Um, and there are sufficient funds in the adopted budget for this contract. So tonight we are recommending that you approve it. Um, we do have uh, someone in attendance on behalf of Acorn Technology Services. So I would like to um, introduce you to Matthew Fuller, who is on the call today. Um, he and I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Um, do any of the directors have uh, qu questions uh, concerning the uh, potential ACORN IT contract management services? I have a question just about where they're located at. Um, sure. So ACORN is low, uh, they are located in Riverside. Um, but as I mentioned, they do work with other local um, cities such as Huntington Beach. They are going to be on site uh, once a week. So um, they're, they're pretty local. And when, when you say once a week, is that next week or as soon as we approve this contract? Yes. So uh, if it's approved tonight, they will be on site starting Thursday, and they're going to be working with our current firm to start the transition. Okay, thank you. Sure. Bob, I... Oh, go ahead, Brett. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead, bud. All right, thank you. Uh, just a question, just a sentence in the uh, uh, staff report. The other firms uh, did not sufficiently demonstrate an understanding of the uh, scope and services. You know, don't give me... 500 of them, but maybe just a general idea of, of maybe uh, where ACORN is uh, a higher understanding of that versus the others. Um, so they were highly responsive to the RFP. They actually responded to every single question. And um, if you do take a look at the RFP, it's, it's really long and it was a really extensive um, ask. So they were, they were very thorough. Um, they, they explained how they would continue the services that we currently have, as well as um, make recommendations for enhancing cybersecurity, which was really important to us. Um, a couple of the other firms um, had really no experience working with government, so that was a little bit concerning. Um, so there was, those were just a few of the reasons, um, but I think responsiveness was, was probably the key issue. A lot of the submissions didn't respond to uh, everything that we had asked for. Got it. And then uh, with any IT transition, uh, their potential hiccups, uh, what sort of fail safes and redundancy are we looking at uh, for a switch over if this is approved? Um, so we are going to continue our current contract with Land One for, um, as I said, up to two months. Um, it may happen shorter, but we just want to ensure that everything uh, transitions smoothly. We have their full support. We've already talked with our current firm and we have a great relationship with them. So they're going to be working alongside the new firm just to introduce um, all of our technology, our network, um, and just kind of walk them through it along the way. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Mike, Mike, did you have a comment? Yeah, I did. Gina, um, SDRMA board meeting was, was last week, and we had a discussion with our IT people and actually approved a new contract for our IT support and things. And one of the things that was talked about very heavily was, and you've already mentioned a little bit about it, is cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. um, it is becoming obviously the hottest topic for everyone, agent, public agencies and everyone. Could could we ask um, Acorn over the next several weeks or a month or whatever to come back to us with a little more of a, a description on what kind of cybersecurity services we're going to be getting, uh, training for staff, training for actually for directors? And I, I would just like to see that as part of what we're going to get from them, if it's possible. Yes, we can definitely do that. We plan to sit down with them and talk about a cybersecurity plan. 
uh, for the next few years. So we can definitely share it with the board. Okay, and 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 again, if 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 you can or if you would like to uh, reach out to SBSDRMA staff because iFish, who is the group that does our IT for SDRMA, which directly affects all of our agencies, might be of some ancillary help or something. If you don't mind doing that, yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Thank Mr. you Vice very much, Mr. Vice President. If I can just add a few things, I just want to yeah. make a comment. Just we we weren't happy to bring you back some more information about our plan about cybersecurity, but be understanding it, that that information would be kind of limited because we don't want to give out too much information, right? We don't want to give out to a, those people out there that knows what we're doing to protect our security systems, right? So we want to so we will give you a plan, but it just be a, just be cognizant it will be limited. Yeah, yeah and, and I'm not looking specifics in that plan. Just a general idea of what Acorn is providing us you know, kind of a, a work schedule, if you will. I'm not looking for the, the, the techniques and the, the, the nitty gritty. I just want an okay. overall plan of, of what, what we're gonna do to protect, protect the district. Yes. But thanks for saying that, I appreciate it. Okay, we need, um, do we have a motion for this? Do I'll, I have a motion? I'll, I'll move to uh, approve the, uh, uh, proposed contract with uh, Acorn. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any, any opposed or um, any abstentions? Okay, we can go on to item number four then. Uh, th this is um, uh, an, an agreement with EEC Environmental, which has been a long-term consultant for us. Um, staff went out, staff did an RFP and uh, and um, EEC came in um, a little less than their, their, their present cost, and I think was the lowest responsive bidder. Um, do any of the directors have any questions? I'll move for approval. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or any abstentions? It's a, it is approved. Um, okay, we, next is, item is uh, considering a sole source agreement with Mike Ballier Consulting, LLC for solid waste consulting services. Um, Mike, Mike is, has helped us in the past. He helps the city of Costa Mesa and, and other cities. Uh, and uh, I think with the, um, um, the impend well the, the 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 present legislation with legislation with 1383 it's extremely important that we um, um, get get our get get our education processes and our uh, resolution and ordinances in line ASAP. Um, any 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 questions by the directors on this item? I have a question, Bob. Is ahead, this a new, we've never had a contract with M MBC before, have we? Is this yes. a new contract? Well, this no. is a new contract. Yes, we've had we've had uh, contracts with uh, NBC for uh, auditing CLNR services. So we've we've used uh, NBC quite quite often for for auditing CLNR performances. Is it a, a, a two? Was that a two year contract or just periodic? Oh, just contract? One, just uh, uh, basically a, um, a one year contract or when the when the service was done. Okay, and then when they say 34,000, is that for a two year period or one year period? One year, 34,000 34, for one year, so a total amount of $68,000 for two years. I'm not, that's, it seems a little excessive to me because yeah. they're working with the city of Costa Mesa, aren't they also? Well, it's not just, it's not just 1383 that they'd be working on. If you can scroll down a little bit farther, um, um, Nolani on the staff report. Thank you. So, so these are the three areas that they'll, they'll be working on. So it's not just 1383. So, um, so it, it's more in depth. So we, we believe $34,000 is, is a, is a fair price. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a new contract that we've never had before. And we're trying to be more conservative this year. So that's why I'm questioning the amounts. Yeah. Mm. Uh, do any of the other directors have uh, input or questions or discussion on this item? I have a quick question, Bob. Go ahead. Um, Scott, do you know if 
Michael is continuing his contract with the city of Costa Mesa? Yes, he yes, is. He's still working for the city of Costa Mesa, yes. Is there any potential conflict or any potential gray area with it, with, with the two, him representing or working with both? I, actually, I think I, I see that as more as an asset because now we can, we can coordinate our efforts. So I, I, I was, I was hoping you were going to say that. I mean, that that's, to me, that's optimal. I mean, if we can get, it, it's been difficult, I know for you to, and for staff to, to work with the city. So if we have that in, so to speak, I think that's beneficial. Also, I just got kind of mm -hmm. piggyback on, on Director Perry saying about cutting costs. Just also, you know, this is a two-year service. Please keep in mind though, that the 21-22 uh, budget is balanced. So even with this $34,000, we are balanced in the solid waste side. So, so um, yeah, we believe this is important. Like, like President Uden mentioned, we, we have to start getting moving on this quickly with SB 1383 and then some of the other uh, concerns that we have with, with uh, the solid waste uh, issues. Uh, we think Mr. Baye could help us. Another question, does NBC have another contract with any other agencies like ours? Ooh, that, that I don't know. I, I have, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Mm. I'm just curious that we're, this is a new, because you used to approve the other ones, didn't you? Because it was a lower amount, the other contracts with NBC? Yes. I I um, the, see, the reason why, and, and, and technically this is in my authority to approve it, but the reason why we're taking back to the board, because we're requesting sole sourcing. We didn't go out to bid, uh, do a, uh, uh, solicit proposals from other um, firms to do the services. And, and the reason why we're requesting the sole service uh, sole source of this service is because of because of his um, we know of his experience and knowledge in, in, in SB 1383. Also, like I said earlier, because of his his working relationship with the city of Coast City of Costa Mesa, our, our partnership with the city of Costa Mesa could be a, a smoother transition. Um, also, his knowledge with CRNR is also very uh, uh, valid, uh, especially when we go into looking into three cart system. So we, we need his, his expertise uh, to help us as we transition into this new part of the that, salt waste industry. That makes, that makes more sense. That's good. Okay, that's my questions. Um, yeah, I, I sat in on a meeting with uh, um, uh, Mr. Ballier and, uh, and the um, sustainability coordinator. And you know, I, I was uh, very impressed with his knowledge of 1383. Um, He's intimately involved. He, he's basically, you know, the, uh, he's basically been with the city and d does their um, uh, diversion reports uh, for the for the for the um, that they're reported to the state. Um, that this is this this is a I think it's a huge opportunity for us, mm -hmm. and I and I and we need to get going on it as quickly as possible. When I was meeting with him and. Um, and uh, Salem, uh, the sustainability coordinator, he did mention that he does contract with a number of other agencies. He he didn't give me a list, but uh, he's he's extremely um, he is he's basically the sole source of information with the city uh, on the diversion reports and whatnot until hey, Salem gets up to speed. Is he going to focus on organics more? Than anything well, there, 1383 has um, uh, a number of different facets. Um, it, it deals with the businesses and it deals with the industries, it deals with the residences. And so, so where we're where we need to be compliant is um, we need to make sure that. Um, um, well, our, the, 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 the residents that we serve and, and the um, um, small, for less than, uh, what is small multifamily housing, I think up to four units are compliant. And it, it is it's gonna take a lot of education to make sure that uh, the materials are in the proper bins. And um, mm -hmm. it's basically a, um, an air, air, a climate change regulation. Um, well, so when, when, when he meets with the city, is he going to represent us when they start talking about their organics? Because, you know, by 2022, city has to have their organics program in place. Yes, no, he basically, basically the city is responsible 
and and the city will actually be overlooking our uh, our our systems with the residences and whatnot. Uh, so they're going to, you know, they'll they'll basically be going around looking to see that the right materials are in the right cans, and then they'll report our actions to the state. And there will be somebody that'll come knocking on our door and and have talks with us and or fine us. Um, so there's a huge amount of education and um, you know to make sure that the proper materials are in the proper cans and whatnot. So right now you you go out and look in the, in in the uh, mixed waste can you'll see um, organic materials like uh, mm. you know, the the well organic you know grasses and twigs and things or trees uh, prawns and whatnot. Uh, those, those we have to educate the residents is not to continue to do that. Um, it, 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 it's a multifaceted, onerous regulation. Um, Mr. Chair, can I say something? Sure, Arlene. I, I was wondering that while he's doing uh, the city, if he couldn't put in a plug that, you know, we, we need to work together and we need to really be able to communicate and help each other on this issue. We, we, the sanitary district will be part of the city's plan that they submit to the state. Yeah, I still think that it'd be nice for publicly for it to be known that we're working together. Oh, well, okay. I, you know I, what I'm I, saying? Sure. You know, because right now it just sounds like the city's taking off, it looks great, but at the same time, we're doing an awful lot too. And we need the credit too that we're doing it as, you know, together. Yes, I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, um, you know, I've, I've, I've worked where multiple agencies work together and generally one of them gets most of the credit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, I think that, that there will be a plan developed. It'll be published and it'll tell what the city has to do and, and what the sanitary district has to do. And hopefully it'll be, I think, I think you're, you're uh, wishing that you're interested in that plan being published. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I believe right. you know, I'll, I'll work towards that. And I think having Mr. Ballier on board you know, we've got a we've got a, a very good chance that that'll happen. Right. Thank you. Any any other director's comments? Um, would would someone make a motion to? Um, oh, Mr. President, I have I have Mr. Mosher's hand raised for public comment, please. Okay. <clears throat> Jim, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, President Uten. Uh, First, first, I would mention the, the district in a minor way is probably going to have to also coordinate with the city of Newport Beach for compliance in uh, Santa Ana Heights area where it provides uh, trash service. Yes. And then secondly, assuming uh, that you accept the staff recommendation when Nolani was showing that on the previous page, I noticed there's a minor typo in it. it it mentioned that the you were being asked to approve a term of two terms. I, I believe that was intended to say two years, as uh, Scott uh, confirmed, I think, earlier. And that's Thank you, that's all. Um, do, do any of the other directors have any comments or can I get a motion to approve? Move for approval of the item as presented. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? or any abstentions. Okay, thank you. We'll go on now <laughs> to, uh, um, I, I, heard, I heard someone coughing. I thought maybe someone wanted to talk. <laughs> uh, now we'll do an oral, um, Esker, are you gonna do an oral presentation on uh, Orange County Sand District Regional Sewer Line Repair in Costa Mesa? Yes, uh, Nolani, may I share my screen, please? Yes, let me co-host you right now, Mark. Give me a second. Okay, go ahead and share your screen.
All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for allowing me to make this presentation. Um, as you likely already know, and as Scott probably briefed our board of directors on, is uh, on May 26, it's a Wednesday, we were notified that uh, OCSD sewer had been punctured by uh, some piles as a result of widening the I-405 freeway. Uh, the OC sanitation sewer that, that was uh, damaged, severely damaged, serves our system that um, I'll say serves a portion from north of the 405 freeway, south of MacArthur, and then from the Santa Ana River East to Susan Street. Um, this yellow line represents the sewer that uh, was damaged. The OC sewer is at, there's a manhole right here where the I-405 right of way to mm -hmm. city right of way our city proper, uh, that divider line, that's where our sewer transitions to the OC sanitation sewer. The OC sand sewer, which travels south, then west in uh, Geisler Avenue and terminates at the OC sanitation district college pump station, which coincidentally is at the corner of college and Geisler. Um, this location where this circle is, is where OC sanitation was removing sewage from our sewer and bypassing it to a location near the in and out burgers off of Geisler and uh, Harbor Boulevard. It's a little bit west of that intersection, actually. And they were then taking our wastewater and depositing there so it could move on to their wastewater treatment plant. This location south of the freeway is bounded by the 405 freeway. Uh, the Mesa Consolidated Water District. This is one of their facilities here. This gray area is a secondary parking or overflow parking for the CarMax that is located here uh, <laughs> off of Harbor and Geisler. And this is just a picture showing where the man, our manhole where they were removing sewage out of our system to transport to the OC system. Um, this is the south side of the freeway where uh, CarMax is located. Uh, basically, this is the hole that they're trying to excavate. These little metal, little, they're big metal. They're about as big around as a person. But these metal piles, they drive them into the ground about three to five feet on center. And there's about five rows of these things. And then what they'll do is they pour the footing for their freeway wall and the freeway on top of those those piles and what they're doing here is digging down then they're going to cut off these piles and they'll dig down some more and cut off some more see notice these two green lines right here there's a straight line that was supposed to be our sewer or the orange county sanitation district regional sewer then there's a little square symbol here we think those two were transposed or somehow possibly the surveyor notes were transposed because the OC sanitation sewer that was located right here, it was actually located and marked by OC sanitation. The contractor potholed to locate the sewer. He put a mark on the wall. The surveyor took the rod. They marked the, the sewer with the survey. Then they buried it all up and they came back about two months later, three months later and started driving piles. Lo and behold, uh, we found that they drove three of these big piles through a sewer. This board right here is looking north at the 405 freeway. We're looking from the uh, CarMax parking lot into the hole that's being excavated. And this board is where our sewer is located. And you can see as they go down, they're cutting off these piles that they, they drove into the ground. Now, when they got, they finally found their sewer, uh, the OC Sanitation District sewer runs from under the freeway across this, this excavation and then behind us. This pile and two others basically went right through the OC Sanitation District sewer. This happens to be a hole. And what they're doing is they're using a vacuum truck to remove any 
sewage so that it doesn't overflow into the excavation pit and stop the contractor from replacing the sewer. By Friday morning uh, of the 28th, the contractor actually had removed all the interfering piles. There was a pile here, a pile here, a pile here, and a pile here. So there were actually four piles that were removed to install a new replacement 12 inch clay pipe sewer. This is a picture of the clay pipe sewer before they backfilled their hole. Uh, what they told me they were gonna have to do is build a bridge now over between each of these two. So between these two, these two piles and these two, Caltrans will build a bridge after they backfill this and then they will pour their freeway wall and their freeway over, over the top of this, this, uh, this sewer pipe that they replaced. Anyway, I guess the good news is OCSD was notified prior to any sanitary sewer overflows. We, Steve Cano, our uh, wastewater superintendent, dispatched staff. They looked at certain manholes in our system. They noticed that the, the sewage was about three to four feet below ground level, which is very, very high. Normally it's about 10 feet below ground level. So we had quite a, a, a sewage discharge, but thanks to the OC Sanitation's bypass uh, truck pumping system, they were able to take our wastewater and divert it to their wastewater treatment plant using a, an, another sewer on Geisler. So that concludes my report. Mr. President, Board of Directors, may I answer any questions? <laughs> Do any of the directors you have I, questions? Yeah, I have a question, ahead, question for Mark. So, so Mark, ultimately, whoever marked that wall is responsible for this. Is that right? I don't, I can't say that for certain. See this mark here? That, yeah. Let me, let me back this, move this up. This mark right here was supposed to be our sewer. And, and well, not our sewer, OC Sanitation District sewer. This square thing was supposed to be where the piles were installed. Well, if you look where this square, square marking is, that's where they installed this pile right there and three uh, others like it. And okay. it turns out they should have been flip-flopped. The pile should have gone where the straight line is and the straight line should have been here. What we don't know was, was the surveyor off and did they transpose the note? Did the contractor, when they came back to mark the wall, did the person marking the wall with the spray paint, did they transpose the marks? Did the contractor make a mistake? No one really knows. And I suspect that's a question that's being asked. I don't know if that's been answered. Uh, I certainly have not been told what actually happened or what caused it. The important thing to me and our agency is that the regional system was replaced and it's functioning because then we don't have to worry about an overflow. But we don't really yeah. know what caused the marks here to be in an incorrect location. Were the Marx brothers in charge of putting those marks on the wall? Yeah, maybe I was. I don't know. I my, my no, brother no, not, Michael may have been the other one that helped me. I, I'm talking about Chico and and Groucho and those Marx brothers, not you. <laughs> I, I mean, this is I I actually happened to be driving down Geisler, heading home, and I saw the the vac truck dumping into the the manhole right next to T Winkle School, and you know, fortunately, I think that was a weekend when kids weren't in school, so. That would, that had been quite a sight, but um, this is just this is mind boggling that that something like this would happen. But I, you know, we're dealing with people and and people do make mistakes. So thanks. Thanks for the report. That was that was terrific. I appreciate that. Hey, hey Mark, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Does Orange County stand own that pumping system? Yes. Or uh, let me go back. They, they have a college pump station located at the corner of Geisler and College. Upstream yes. from that pump station, they have a, a gravity line that then, uh, the, and I can't remember how many feet this goes, but then it goes due north up all the way almost to MacArthur, um, MacArthur uh, Boulevard. Uh, back about four or five years ago, my understanding is they transferred the portion at the Caltrans right-of-way line 
anything north was transferred and we accepted uh, as, as a local sewer because it's really only our service area that feeds their pipeline. Um, so, so it's their pump station, their sewer to this point, from this point north, it's our sewer. Okay, well, Mark, Mark, some some additional information. They actually asked if we would take the sewer going under the freeway, and we declined. Yeah, I I heard that, but I didn't want to necessarily muddy the waters because I didn't know how germane that was to this whole discussion. No, but I'm, yes. it, just for if, yeah. uh, you know for information. <laughs> uh, do any of the directors have any questions for uh, a district engineer, Mark? Esker. Very good report, Mark. Thank you very much. Uh, we, now we go on to item number seven. Um, consider establishing a different start time for the boards of directors um, study session meetings. They're, they're presently held on the second Tuesday, generally of, uh, at uh, 930 in the morning. Um, do any of the directors have any questions or input on, on this item? Mr. President? Director Eccles. Uh, just since I requested that this to at least be uh, reviewed by the board here, uh, I have two, two reasons. Um, one, I just think a 9.30 um, in the morning is, is for members of the public. Uh, you know, very few, if any, are gonna Take time out of our work day to participate in our in our you know study sessions, and I would argue sometimes our study sessions, that our budget review was a perfect example. We get a lot accomplished at those study sessions, and to have input and and things at those study sessions, it makes our board meetings a little bit more efficient. Um, so some public input at those uh, study sessions would be applicable, and then also then you know selfishly. To be perfectly honest, uh, 9:30 uh, as we transition, thankfully, back in person to the uh, headquarters. You know, a two-hour uh, study session, add on another hour of uh, you know commuting back and forth, your morning shot. Um, you know, Vice President Schaefer has a quicker commute than I do, but it'll still uh, still a little bit of time on the uh, freeway. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to just ask, and if it if it worked for other directors to, you know, do another 4:30 at some point mm -hmm. during the month, that would be great. And if if that doesn't work with uh, the directors, consider maybe even a they do those lunch and learns or something like that. So throw it out there for everyone's consideration, and if we can do it, great. And if not. All good. Hey, Bob, I have a comment. Go ahead, Art. Yeah, for me, that doesn't work, another 4.30 meeting because of my coach all year round. And then I play matches that go, you know, like that one meeting, it goes to like seven o'clock at night. So the best time for me is in the morning for this study session. That's just my opinion. Hey, Bob, let me, let me, if, if I might. Um, yeah. For my business, I tend to keep Tuesday and Wednesday nights open for my customers that need to meet with me in the evening. And I do have a few of those. Um, evenings doesn't work. Uh, you know, I might consider, and, it, and I'd, like, I'd like staff to come back before we decide on this, um, going to another evening meeting, the effect on staff time and anything else that we would have that would be increased in terms of those dollars. The other thing I would ask to consider is if 930, it, and, not, and, I, and I agree with Brett, I think 930 does cut into a morning, um, maybe we could look at moving our study session to an earlier time, um, 8 o'clock, 830, something like that. Um, and, and in terms of public input, quite honestly, um, we don't get a lot of public input either at our study sessions or at our board. So, so to, to just change based on letting more of the public be involved, I'm not sure that's a valid argument because in my tenure on the board and my previous tenure on the board, um, other than some dedicated folks who, who, who contribute, um, we get very little. I, I mean, it was obvious tonight when we did the rate resolution. Um, 
if people were paying attention, we might have had some protests or we might have had some further discussion. So I, I think I would like staff to come back with some idea on cost changes. And if if we meet in the evening, is it going to cost us more and, and things like that? And Mr. President, go ahead. Just a follow up to Vice President Schaefer's a comment. Uh, an earlier morning would be great um, as well. An, an eight o'clock start, at least then, you know, some of us don't have to go to work, leave work, and then go back to work where we could just go straight to a study session earlier in the morning. But I agree. Uh, maybe staff can give us, you know, hey, if this thing's going to cost a fortune or blah, 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 then obviously no. But maybe an earlier start would be more uh, acceptable. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, Artie. Just real quick. Yeah. I, an earlier start, I mean, makes a lot more, it, it's a lot easier, I think, overall. So just to, we should consider that as one of the alternatives. Thank you. Mr. President. Go ahead, Arlene. You know, I was going to suggest anyway, at eight o'clock, for the simple reason that, uh, you know, ISDOC starts at 730 in the morning, all, all kinds of different uh, committees start early, early. And that would, staff would be there at that time, there would not be any uh, kind of problem as far as, you know, changing everything around and financially would be fine. Anyway, I have no problem with 8 or 8.30, but I really think, you know, the earlier, the better. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with Arlene. Uh, you know, I think, I think an 8 o'clock start time would um, be the most beneficial, you know, for, for the people that have to go to work. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't have to anymore. So um, anyway, I think staff has some direction. Maybe they could bring back some of the uh, questions that we've asked, uh, directors have asked uh, at, yes. at say the study session, so we can you know att attend to this as soon as possible. Um, if if there's going to be a change, um, yeah. so, so I think staff has staff has direction. Yes. Even Waco is seven thirty in the morning, so you know. Yep. Yeah. You know, and Bob, just real quick. Um, I agree with Brett in terms of there are there are certain subjects that come up that we study that the public does want to maybe get involved in, probably more predominantly budgets and rates and things like that. I, would, I wouldn't be opposed to an occasional study session in the afternoon. We may have to call it a special study session, but I don't think there's anything in the law that precludes us from taking a particular item like a rate increase. We did it with the budget mm -hmm. and meeting. And if we want public input, do it at 4.30 or 5.30. Yeah, maybe on, staff- Like maybe, on an exception. Yeah, maybe staff could come back with what they think, you know, the, the two or three most important things um, to, to get the public, in, to, to improve the public input. But uh, Scott, do you, have, do you have direction? Yes, we do, Mr. President. All right, uh, thank, the, thank you all for uh, considering this. I appreciate it, some good ideas. Okay, thank you. We'll go on to item number um, eight, which is uh, consider the voting for one candidate of the CSDA Association Boards of Directors, seat A, Southern Network for the term uh, January 1, 2022 to December 31, 2024. Um, I think probably everyone's read this, the staff report and there looked like there's a, there were 10 or 11 um, applicants, which is there's uh, just nine. quite a few. Um, yeah, no, nine is a lot. <laughs> yeah, nine. Um, uh, do any of the directors have any input or discussion on this item? I'd like to say something on this. Being, Go ahead. being that I'm so involved in this, uh, Actually, there's the nine of them. And what I've said in every meeting that I've gone to, not our type, but other types, that it's so important to get somebody with experience and with the background of CSDA, where they have gone to some of the workshops and, and been educated so that they understand what they're doing. And I think you'll find that even more so as the years come by 
that uh, this is very important. Joe McKenzie's seat is up and she has been um, doing a great job. She's actually with the Southern Network right now, like I am. And it's a three year type of a situation where you're voted in and then you have three years. The attendance has to be good and the experience has to be there. And, you know, at this time, I'm, I'm just recommending Joe McKenzie because she sits on so many um, areas up in CSDA uh, as chair, as well as just being part of it. So anyway. Do any of the other directors have any input on this? Mr. President? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, sure. I did it again, sorry. Yeah, I know, <laughs> so you go. I get excited now. Wait, uh, wait, wait, let's go alphabetical. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but Eccles wins. There you go. <laughs> go ahead, Perfect. Director Eccles. All right. Just a, a question, uh, maybe a, a Secretary uh, Schaefer. Uh, obviously, I, I would trust your uh, expertise on this as, as you, you're probably most familiar with these people. Can you just, is this normal if the incumbent, uh, like as you said, uh, you have faith in Joe McKenzie and all that, uh, mm -hmm. that there's this many, say, challengers? Is this a new thing or? This is crazy? new, seriously. Okay because usually you don't have that many go for it. And it's different agencies that put up different people. And that's what I'm trying to explain to them that if they can get involved for a while and get known, that would be beneficial to them. But anyway, so that's how we have nine. And because of uh, Joe going again, it was uh, put together in a way that you have more time. So they all hopped in. <laughs> and was there any, I mean, have you heard any scuttlebutt about, hey, well, we don't like the way Joe's doing this or any, anything like that, no. that, you know, no. okay, gotcha. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mike? You, you know, I don't have any problem, obviously, with Joe. She's done, a, she's done an excellent job, and I think she represents Southern California very well on the CSDA board. But I got to tell you, if Joe wasn't running, the gal, for, the, the gal, the, the board president from the Placentia Library District is Joanne Martin. What an extremely, uh, uh, I mean, that she's got an unbelievable resume. And I think she would have done an excellent job on this board. Um, I just think from a, from a standpoint of, of us special districts, we need to do everything we can to get this Joanne Martin involved because, man, she she's impressive with with her. She's a top gun. I don't want her shooting at me from, you know, very impressive. So it, I just I I just want us to to recognize that that uh, she's someone we probably should uh, get more involved. Well, she's a good comment, and you know what we do is actually turn around and put, uh, have her go for the board. Or a seat on the board, which is good, you know, as it comes up, and I'm sure it will. Okay. Uh, any other any other directors' input? Uh, do we have a motion on this item? I'll, I'll move to move. accept Joe McKenzie as our representative. Thank you. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? I think. Uh, Staff will take care of um, sending in our information to, to, to uh, the CSDA boards of directors, uh, CDA. Um, the engineer's reports, uh, um, receive and file um, capital improvement project status report. Mar um, Director es or engineer Esker has written the report and there's also a detailed status reports on each item. Do any of the directors have any discussions, questions, or? I, I, let's see, this is a receive and file. Yes. Um, seeing none, then I, I don't think we need to vote on this. Um, the next item is consider awarding a contract to GCI construction for the Iowa Street pump station for Spain replacement project. Um, Scott, is Mark going to give this report? Yes, Mr. President, this is uh, Mark. Mark Esker will be giving this report. 
President Newton, thank you. Uh, board members, thanks again for, for allowing me to, to speak. Um, what the item before you tonight is basically to an award is to award a contract to GCI Construction Incorporated. Um, what they'll generally be doing is installing a dual, a new dual force main, replacing the old force main at the Iowa pump station. As you all likely know, the Iowa pump station is located over by the T. Winkle School on Iowa, between, I guess, a little bit north of Geisler. Uh, the force main is about 200 feet long, which is, I'm going to say, about two to three widths of a typical residential single family house. Uh, so our contractor will trench from the pump station to the up to the downstream, excuse me, manhole. He will install two force main and then and then make the connections at that downstream manhole and the upstream pump station. Um, that being said, we received three bids uh, on May 20th. The, the three bids range from 168,000 and $18 to a high bid of uh, $244,800. Uh, attached to the report was the uh, uh, the, bid, the summary of the bids. Uh, and I'll say that the engineer's estimate was $160,000. So uh, we were about $8,000 low on our, on our engineer's estimate. But that being said, uh, GCI construction was the low bid. Their bid was $168,018. After checking their licensing requirements uh, and their paperwork, we find that they're the low responsive uh, and responsible low bidder. And therefore we recommend awarding to GCI Construction Incorporated uh, for the amount of $168,018. Uh, dollars uh, and we have a second item to we're asking you to also prove a 10% contingency in the amount of uh, $16,801.80 and this item is to uh, handle any unforeseen things that pop up during constructions and that way we could minimize interruptions and stoppage work stoppages to the work being done I will add one other piece of information uh, early last week, uh, we realized or found out that the city of Costa Mesa will be paving Iowa and we need, they will be doing this starting in uh, mid to late August. Uh, they were told, they contacted me and told me that we had to have our facility built. Otherwise, uh, we would have to pay to repave their street because of the moratorium that would go in effect once they completed their construction work. We have already contacted the apparent low bidder. We discussed this issue of proceeding on the project very quickly. Uh, they have verbally told us that they will proceed as quickly as possible, understanding that they needed to be completed uh, sometime early to mid August at the latest. And uh, they had verbally told me that as soon as we give them notice to proceed, they'll proceed, you know, they'll start making submittals and uh, working with us to get that project completed. So it is urgent that we make this award tonight and I, I recommend award uh, to the low bidder. Uh, may I answer any questions or is there any inf additional information that anybody's looking for? Tell the city to start at the opposite end of the street if they would. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're doing that. Um, we're we're we've already talked about that. So hopefully they. In fact, the uh, the the uh, resident engine city's resident engineer uh, told me that that she will be doing that. Uh, that's our hope, and and that may give us an extra week or two. But the city's going to be moving real fast on their project. Right. Yeah, I'll move good for approval. I move for approval of project three twenty two Iowa Street Force Main Rehabilitation. Second, Mr. President. Oh. I just had a question oh. for Mark before we go. 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 No, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Director Eccles. Uh, and this just, yeah, it looks okay. But as a contractor myself, I look at the uh, bid, and if I was GCI, I'd be like, uh oh, because the spread between the uh, top two and then and then their bid is is it's significant. Um, did you? I mean, if I you interviewed them, obviously, and 
Have you gone through a full scope meeting to make sure we're not gonna get hit with some sort of change orders, things like that? Escal escalated schedules that we want them to start right away, anything like that that might have them a little squeamish on their lower bid? Uh, Mike Benish and I talked to the contractor about this bid, about their number. They double checked their values and they, uh, they said that this was a good number for them. I, uh, when we talked to them about moving forward as quickly as possible and the new deadline, they did not mention anything about a change order or for expediting the project. But that being said, um, the, there's been some delays on President Pump Station and the uh, uh, switch gear has come, hasn't shown up, but it's supposed to be here now this week. Edison still hasn't given us a date to install the new transformer. However, we have uh, uh, sent them a check for that and we're, we are working actively with their planner. And I think we're gonna get a date or a commitment any time now from them. But because they may have to pull off the president's pump station job, I think they wanna take that crew and build this one real quick. And then they can come back and finish a president pump station uh, in August, uh, early September at the latest. So I think they have a plan here that I'm open to entertaining uh, because they can't move forward and that way they don't have to uh, uh, furlough their crews until, until you know, the other job gets back on, on, on track again. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I think they're willing to work with us uh, and they understand and their price, they double checked it. It seems good to them. Okay. I would just, again, just ask that you double check on an accelerated schedule and you, you mentioned that. So, because yeah. uh, change orders benefit no one but the contractor, so. Under, understood, and I can't guarantee there won't be change orders because you never know when they start digging the trench, they might find a buried body or something. You never know. <laughs> or, or, or put a pile through the sewer line. Yeah. You know, we, we've used GCI quite a bit over the years. Yeah. And their work seems to be top notch and I, they usually come in right on spot. So I, I'm comfortable. Cool. Thanks. Mr. President, I see Mr. Mosher's hand raised for public comment, please. Okay. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I, I'm just curious the, the the name of the high bid company listed here and on the bid register is the Roberts Incorporated. Yeah, is that a typo? Is it T. E. Roberts? Because there's a company called T. E. Roberts that does a great deal of water and sewer construction for the city of Newport Beach. Well, it may have, it might be that. I was looking at the at the uh, bid tabulation form as they came in. I didn't actually look at the the bid uh, itself, so I may have misread it. So it could be that, but uh, uh, I, you know, I guess I can go back and look look at that and then get back to you next month, uh, Mr. Mosier. Thank you. Uh, did I hear a motion to approve this contract? Yeah, Art, sec Art, Art motion and I seconded. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion carried. Um, going to item number three. Um, it's a consideration to approve approving resolution number 2021-942 to vacating and quit claiming a sewer easement not necessarily not necessary for public use. Uh, do any of the directors have any questions on this item? If not, can I have a, a motion to approve? Move for approval. Second. Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, we can go on now to the treasurer's report. Um, do Do any of the directors have questions on the on the treasurer's report? I I Mark, I had one. Are you on, Mark? I am. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. I can't find my notes, but uh, oh, here it is. Um, there was. Uh, on the undesignated reserves in the, uh, it must have been the, the trash contract there, it, it shows a, a, a large negative. Um, 
do, do you have an explanation for that or? Uh, sure, Mr. President, on the, uh, the investment report that you approved earlier this evening, uh, there was a um, uh, negative balance oh, yeah. uh, that there is um, for your undesignated balance in the solid waste fund. And that really gives is given rise to uh, that we're in our revenue dry period right now. And uh, over the past um, several years ago, uh, the board had asked that we kind of track that revenue dry period and identify that so it has some visibility oh. on the investment report okay. and, but that visibility does highlight the fact that there's not really available funds to do anything um, if you take into account the money you really want to set aside to get you through that revenue uh, that revenue dry period so that's what's given rise to that um, that negative uh, uh, that negative balance okay uh, thank you I, I should have asked that back in the <laughs> In, in the under the investment report, that's where I saw it. So, do any of the other directors have questions uh, for Mark on the treasurer's report? Uh, if, if I may, Mr. President, this item here is the um, is something a little bit different, and it's um, oh it's yeah your, yeah uh, investment policy for next fiscal year that there's a resolution tied to that, yeah. uh, and just just as a reminder, the uh, the board is responsible for placing the investments. Uh, on behalf of the district. And if you so choose in any given year, you can delegate that uh, authority for a one year period of time uh, to a treasurer to uh, do the investing for you. And so what's before you this evening is a, uh, a resolution that approves uh, an investment policy for the 21-22 fiscal year and does delegate that investment function to, uh, to the district treasurer uh, for the year. Attached to the agenda report, we've included a uh, the resolution, uh, the actual statement of investment policy, and also a red line version of the policy yep. so the board members can easily see what the changes were uh, year over year to the policy. There were no changes to the government code this past year, so the only changes that you're seeing uh, in the policy are just cleanup uh, items and just do... Um, uh, and just some consistency items. So with that, I'm available for any questions uh, uh, the board may have. Do any of the directors have questions? Consider adopting. Okay, we need we need to uh, we need to adopt this resolution. Um, I'll move for motion? approval for adopting resolution 2021-943. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, and Mr. President. Yes. Uh, did you skip over no, item number five on purpose, or are we doing it later? Well, maybe. No. I, I, I believe I've uh, covered each item. Yes, you have. Conversation. Report from the directors. Okay, now we can move down. Uh, do we have any attorney's report? No, Mr. President, I have nothing uh, for the good of the order tonight. Thank you, sir. Uh, now we move down to local meetings. Um, you know, I'll, I'll report on the Orange County Sand District. These are meetings that that, uh, that I don't charge the district for because I'm paid by the Orange County Sand District. Probably the most important thing was, you know, we had very long, um, uh, board meeting and um, operations committee meeting that I attended. Um, many, many items. I think it was a two hour long meeting. Uh, you can go on uh, their website and, and look at the agenda if you, if, you, if you want. Probably one of the most important things uh, relating to some of our discussion earlier was uh, relating to 1383. One of the 1383 requirements is that um, um, the cities and the cities and counties that are going to be regulated uh, have to annually purchase recovered organics such as composted solids, mulch, renewable gas, and electricity for biomass conversion. It's one of the requirements of 1383. Orange County Sand District has about 600 tons a day of um, biosolids that they send to many different places or several different places and and some of them are composted so they're going to work with their their composting contractors to bring that compost back 
and make it available to the, the 25 member agencies at, at a discount. Uh, we're, we're the actual me member agencies, so they would, they would make, they would give it, um, try to get an agreement with the city of Costa Mesa. Uh, and that would satisfy that 1383 requirement or part, at least partially satisfy it. So that would uh, basically, that's a goal to close the recycling loop and, and utilize the biosolids locally. They've actually made them available locally in the past, but I think with 1383, more of the 25 member agencies uh, will will do that. Orange County Sand District did just get uh, their NPDES permit renewed for another five years. Um, they they did a, they have approved their budget for the next fiscal year and it's a 408 million plus dollars budget. Uh, and and, and um, there are many projects and um, rehab and new projects that that, that that you can take a look at if you want that on their uh, on their agenda. Um, let's see. Our, Director Perry, did you go to the SARFA meeting? Yes, I went to the SARFA meeting. It was uh, held on I think, last Thursday, and I'll be turning into my written report along with the other meetings I attended. Okay, thank you. Uh, Secretary Schaefer, did, you, did, did ISDOC have a meeting this month? Yes, several. <laughs> anyway, on the ISDOC part, uh, we discussed about having uh, an in-person meeting and decided to, against it for now because everything keeps changing and we're not sure what the governor is going to say. So we decided to wait another month. And so this meeting that comes July 29th is going to be a Zoom meeting and it will be uh, the Great Park. And we will have, be having uh, It'll be on July 29th. The meeting will be actually Joe Building, and he's the guest speaker, and he's the department director of planning and development of the Great Park. And hopefully he will be talking on what's in the Great Park now and what's the future of the Great Park. And then also for our um, other uh, highlight district that we have always, uh, it will be Placentia Library, and uh, it should be a good one, too, because uh, it will have uh, Jeanette, and she, she's excellent um, on speaking, um, Contreras, Jeanette Contreras, and she will be telling us about the library. This gives us a chance to get out and find out the highlights of different special districts, aside from just sitting there with these people. And then uh, I wanted to bring to everyone's attention that I'm sure you've looked at the magazine the CSDA has just put out. And the great part of it is, I call it the center floor. And that's where RGM highlights, if you want to, do you want to be a general manager? And it's all about what you would be doing. And it's a two page, big page, it's really good, it's worth reading. So I hope everyone will look at it because it's really good. And then our annual CSDA conference in Monterey will be uh, coming up and that's on September 30th through, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, August, August 30th to September 2nd. And this will be a big one. Uh, we will be using uh, three different hotels. And the reason why I say it's going to be so large is because uh, we have been doing um, the, nom the nominations of best uh, staff person, best uh, secretary, best GM, all through. And uh, I sat on this board this last time that did this. And it's, it's really a job because there are so many people that compete on this. And it's a fantastic uh, thing to get this award. And so the agencies all send different people. Like our agency, well, look at it, we've got four different nominations that are gonna come out. And so 
it's pretty exciting. So, you know, you should, if you haven't already made your reservations, which I think you have, be sure and do it right away so that we can see what we're doing and, and let you know, Lani know what's going on. And then we've already decided on the seat A, so we don't have to that. And the next conference, the annual conference of 2022, will be in Sacramento. And um, I also went to Waco, and uh, that was a good speaker, Dimitri. Uh, I can't say his last name. Bob, do you know it? <laughs> Bozio, something like that. Anyway, he's the resource planner for um, actually being the manager for water and, and the and the and the is it water and and the grocery uh, for the team. Anyway, he's, he spoke about the water and he was saying, this is interesting. And he was explaining to us that we are at the lowest that we've ever been. Uh, drought emergency dictation now covering 41, uh, actually counties in LA, in, in, I'm sorry, in California. So he's, he talks about the drought and uh, I have a lot of uh, information if you want to see it. If you don't, it's okay. <laughs> but I do, I, I do go on with it. And you know, I do want to explain that the, the conference for the board secretary and clerk conference is October 25th to the 27th. And it's going to be in Anaheim. And it will be uh, at the Embassy Suites. And, We'll have more information as far as time and so forth. And then there's a special leadership academy for North people. So uh, that will be coming up, but we don't have to worry about that. And then on, on our conference, be sure and go to the exhibitor showcase at the Monterey because that's really worthwhile and you get a lot of good ideas and information from it. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, Vice President Schaefer, um, SDRMA. Yeah, just real quick. We we had uh, our, our board meeting last week, Wednesday and Thursday, live in Sacramento. And I got to tell you, going to Sacramento is about the last place anybody wants to go right now. <laughs> uh, it is, the, yeah. everything's boarded up. Restaurants are hard to get to. Um, it's really, regardless of that, so nothing really to report from SDRMA. We approved our budget, finally got our liability and workers' comp rates or our liability rates sewn up from our excess carriers. And um, we got approval. I, I've been talking to you all for about the last year about SDRMA's captive, which is a, a secondary joint powers authority that we've established in the state of Utah basically giving, giving us more ability to invest. And that was finally approved. So we now have an insurance agency in the state of Utah. And I am the, uh, the chairman of the captives. So uh, I'm looking forward to board meetings in Utah, <laughs> which, which doesn't cost Costa Mesa Sanitary District anything because it's all done through SDRMA. And that's about it. That's about okay, it. Okay, any other meetings? Oh, I'm sorry, Bob, real quick. Arlene didn't mention this, but Gina might know the name Dylan Gibbons, who is the CSDA legislative guy. Well, at our board meeting last week, he said that he had to get out of the meeting quick because he is moving to Virginia. Dylan is gone. He he moved last week. His oh, wife yes, took yes. I know all about that. Yes. Yeah, his his wife took a position in DC. So uh, CSDA is looking for a legislative an analyst now, I guess. So uh, it was a really a shock. I mean, an hour after he left our meeting, he was gone. So yeah. anyway, I thank thought Gina might like that. No, thank you for saying something on that because um, we were really shocked at a board meeting that we had the executive board meeting on this first. And we all just sat there because he is so fantastic. 
Right. Yeah. And of course, we're so proud of Gina because of getting the staff one. And I just want you to know that on all the thing, items that dealt with us, I, I abstained because it was conflict of interest. So that, you know, she's as legal as could be. <laughs> and it's, the presentation is fantastic to watch. <laughs> That's hey. it. Um, I, I have a couple of meetings to report on. I attended uh, a, a Zoom meeting with uh, the, the CAC chair and Scott on their work plan for next year. Turns out that the bylaws require that the CSDA president and, um, and the chair of the committee meet and go over the bylaws. Um, and, and one thing that we did encouraged Scott to do in that meeting was um, put together some criteria and and Director Eccles and I also talked uh, to Scott about this on our one-on-one -on -one meeting put together some criteria uh, so that um, CRNR knows exactly how uh, to um, how, how to behave to get back into um, um, talking about their um, cost of living increase that, that we're scheduling for about six months out. But I, I, I you know, Director Eccles and I thought, you know, they, they, they need to know very, they need to know what the rules of the road are and mm -hmm. what criteria, you know, we want them to do better in and how much better we want them to do um, um, so that we can, uh, talk about that six months from now, the, the cost of living increase. Uh, so the CAC has a work plan. Um, I think Scott should be publishing that pretty quickly. Um, I met, I and Director Schaefer met with our public relations consultants and, and we have that ad hoc committee uh, to proactively keep up to date on matters that affect the district, uh, such as agencies that regulate the district uh, like the air quality management district, uh, and then they're going through some um, uh, regulations, right? Regulation updates right now to uh, uh, that might endanger our um, portable generator operation, and and uh, they they regularly uh, attend LAFCO, and um, they have a lot of oversight over us. Uh, and they'll soon be publishing a municipal service review. If we have any boundary issues or or consolidations and um, and whatnot, you know they keep us up to date on uh, on the staff and the elected uh, that that might might affect LAFCO and and other issues. Um, those are my reports. Um, do do any of the other directors have reports that they they need to uh, report on? Yeah, Bob, I have a couple of quick ones. Um, I wasn't able to attend the OCOG meeting last week because I obviously was in Sacramento, but I just wanted to let everybody know that the OCOG General Assembly, which I think a lot of us go to every year, um, will be held on November 17th at the Grand California, whatever they call that hotel at Disneyland. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a pretty beneficial meeting at, and it, it indirectly, um, an effect on, on our district will be uh, OCOG filed suit against H, HCD um, based on the RENA um, determinations. So that'll indirectly affect us, I think. But as we develop more out of that from OCOG, I'll, I'll let the board know. Um, the, other, the other item I attended, I did a seminar last week with SWANA uh, and my notes are attached to my monthly report um, SWANA puts on some really good informational and they're, they're brief. They don't go more than an hour. They usually do them right at lunchtime, which is again, beneficial, I think for those, those of us that are working, the two of us. Um, and it, it had to do with disaster recovery and landfill situations, especially with the workforce. And, and it was a good seminar that, uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions if anybody has any, uh, for Nolani, um, it, 
as members of SWANA, Nolani, are we individually members or is our agency a member of SWANA? You are individually members. Okay, so the bill that you guys forwarded to me for my membership, do I pay that? No, we pay that for you. Okay, so I need to get you the bill back? Yes, but I believe your membership is current for another year. Okay. okay. But you can go ahead and give it back to me. We'll take care of it. Would you just double check and let me know? I'd hate to put more burden on you, but if you don't mind. No worries. We'll do. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Any other, any other members need to have qualifying meetings that they need to report on? If not, um, there's no old business uh, and no new business, I don't believe. Um, oral communications and director's comments. Um, Mr. President. Director Eccles. I've got a couple. Um, uh, first, we uh, received uh, correspondence from a member of the public um, regarding some uh, issues with, with trash services and things like that. And so Scott, I, tonight may not be the best thing, but can you bring forth maybe some answers? Uh, Cause it, it brought up some, some questions, put it that way. So maybe at a future meeting, we could uh, address those or, or if you got a couple quick answers tonight, but I don't know if this is the forum for it. Uh, yes, uh, I, I do, I can do a quick. quick uh, hey, Scott, Scott, while you're getting your notes, can I just make one real quick comment on that? Mm -hmm. um, after getting that note, Brett, um, you know, Bob, Bob and I are members of the Ad Hoc Solid Waste Committee. And, and that's an issue that I've talked to Bob about the next time we have a committee meeting. I'd, and for your benefit, Scott, I'd like, I'd like to discuss the comments and some of the things that were made. So just the, looks like you're ready. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. President and, and board directors. Yes, we had an incident uh, that occurred last Thursday when a, a resident uh, had uh, two organic carts out placed for, for collection. And, and apparently one of, the cart, one of the organic carts was emptied and, and the other was not. Uh, we learned about this about 6, 11 p.m. on Friday. Uh, what we believe what happened after we, we did contact Mike Carey at CRNR and, and after consulting with uh, Mr. Carey, we believe what occurred that, that, that the hauler did try to did pick up that second cart, but we believe what happened was moisture was in that organic cart and that moisture caused the, the organics to stick to the cart and therefore wasn't emptied out of the contents. The reason why I believe that is because what Mike Carey said, it, it, this was something similar that happened in his house uh, when his organic cart still had like 80% of the content still in it after the truck went by. So we think that might've been the issue. Um, we don't know when the resident did complain um, on Gov delivery about uh, on 6, 11 p.m. on Friday, we should have received that. And then we, what we would have done is, is done a courtesy collection on Saturday. However, we didn't receive that complaint until we got into the office today. And so we're, we're gonna make those corrections, make sure that when we get complaints on the weekend, especially on a Friday, when, when a resident has their trash missed on Friday, we have, we have the contact person um, email address and phone number to call and request a courtesy collection on Saturday so we can do that. Uh, we are aware that this resident did get her organic cart, that second cart empty today at 1145 this morning. So, so the issue has been resolved. Okay, great, thank you. And then, um, I just wanted to once again um, thank uh, Caitlin and Scott and every staff member for going through this uh, budget process as uh, someone who came in new and fresh to this group. Uh, you know, I was I was very pleased and thankful for their uh, incredible work on the budget. And um, what made me very excited as someone who's uh, kind of a budget, I don't like deficit spending to see 22, 23. You guys figured it out and put together a, a non-deficit spending on our uh, solid waste budget. So great work on that. And so uh, I just want to thank all of you because we, we asked as a board uh, some tough things. And anyone who needs to cut things in an organization, it is not easy. So to all of our staff yeah. members, a big thank you for <clears throat> working to uh, get the best possible uh, budget out there. And, and also thank you to the uh, my fellow directors and staff again for meeting several special study session meetings. I've seen these budget meetings in other organizations. We could have what our friends over at City Hall have two in the morning if we had this on one night. No mm -hmm. one wants that. 
No one needs that. <laughs> and nothing good happens after 10 o'clock. Let's put it that way. So <laughs> yeah. um, I just appreciate everyone's willingness to meet over it because it, it is an important thing that we do. And I think our final product, uh, while all, everything could always be a little bit better, I think we all work together on this process and uh, put forth the best, best effort. So my thanks to everyone and uh, really appreciate everyone's uh, hard work and diligence and Put, putting forth a solid budget. And uh, last thing, I uh, wish everyone an incredible Independence Day. This year, hopefully, is a heck of a lot better than last year. Hopefully, you're out enjoying uh, in whatever you may do, a barbecue and a few uh, few beverages of your choice and uh, celebrate a, a great day in the coming weekend. So happy Independence Day. Wait, fireworks have already started. We started last week. I know. I know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it, and good good luck to Director Perry on his fireworks stand because he raises a lot of good works his tail off. And so good yeah. luck, Art. Hope everything goes great. And hey, Director or President Uten, break a leg Wednesday, okay? Oh yeah, yeah, I will. Um, yeah, what what uh, uh, what he's referring to is is I get to be on a. Uh, in a comedy contest with the headliner <laughs> Jay Leno. Oh, really? That's great. Great. Wow. That's uh, ask, ask him if he has any cars for sale. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, well, yeah. I suppose we shouldn't be talking about this, but what I was going to ask him is, you know, if he's from the Midwest or where did he get his uh, interest in cars and his mechanical ability and so on. Anyway, I have one last item. Uh, I Scott, I would, I would, I would like the um, uh, the ad hoc committee to meet in early July, if possible, and and just to begin to view a formulation of uh, how our agency is is um, going to, to what we have to do to uh, catch up with eight thirteen eighty three. That's um, always ad hoc committee, correct? Yes. Do any of the other directors have in questions, input, or discussion items? I had a comment. Uh, first of all, I would just want you to know, after our last meeting, College Park, everything was picked up in the morning, on time. It was fantastic. So, you know, we were one of the people that were complaining the most. So I just want everybody to know that. And then also, I want to tell you, we are so, so fortunate, and I can't say it enough, to have Scott as our general manager, because up in Sacramento, he's thought of so highly with the board up there and with CSDA and everything that's going on. And he, he's really jumping in and helping on so many committees. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know that he's really worth something. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and you know, one one interesting incident is I, I pulled the, the neighbor's trash cans in and their organics cart was not emptied. It turns out it was next to, too close to a vehicle. Um, you know, so so I moved it over <laughs> so that they can, they'll get it next week. So that's one reason that sometimes they don't pick them up. But anyway, any other, any other directors need to make input, comments? communications if not um thank you very much it's been a it's been a, a very laborious session and we accomplished a lot and uh, this meeting is adjourned